And, and <laughs> one group found that ketones actually will bind to cells and inhibit um, something called the NLRP3 inflammasome. Ohm as a suffix just generally refers to like a sum, like the entirety of whatever it is you're looking at. Um, and, and so the inflammasome essentially evokes this idea of, of something that is in charge of all inflammation. And that's not too far from the truth um, where th this molecule NLRP3 essentially, if it's activated, it will essentially turn on all of the machinery to produce all of these pro-inflammatory cytokines and initiate immune systems throughout the body. Now, of course, we need a healthy immune system, so this can't be viewed as a bad thing, but you want it to be turned on when it's supposed to be turned on and turned off when it should be turned off. One of the problems with obesity, or even, even not overt obesity, but just fat cells that are getting too big, even if the person's just modestly overweight, is that they become pro-inflammatory. And this is why weight gain is associated with a, a, it's sometimes called a subclinical inflammatory state, where it's subclinical because it's not like the person's coming in with some raging fever, but in fact, the inflammatory markers are higher than you would expect in an otherwise healthy person. So in these instances where you have kind of aberrant activation of the immune system, and inflammation, it's valuable to know how can we turn that down? How can we turn down this aberrant inflammation? And ketones will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, when ketones, and this isn't because of their energetic their, or their caloric value, it's because they can bind to these things called G protein coupled receptors. But there are so many different types um, uh, that ketones will bind a particular type and in so doing act at like a hormone, binding this surface receptor, just like a hormone does, initiating a series of events that result in the inhibition of this key inflammatory signal. We've specifically looked at the signaling capability in fat cells, and we found that when ketones come to fat cells, including fat cells in humans, that it starts to activate an uncoupling process at the mitochondria. Now, now briefly, um, all that means is basically the ketones result in the mitochondria in fat cells um, being much more active. It basically stimulates the metabolic rate in the fat cells by about two or three times um, over normal. And again, that's not because the ketones being burned for energy. It's because there, once again, is a G protein coupled receptor on the fat cell that is, that is activated when ketones come knocking. And then that tells the cell to do something that yes, ketones are an energy. That's why, you know, the brain so greedily pulls in ketones because it has an energetic um, value. It has a caloric value, roughly similar to glucose, you know, about four calories per gram. But independent of that is its signaling capabilities, which, which is just like the cherry on top of the low carb cake, where this is, it, it's really, these are molecules that again are an energy source, maybe desperate for the brain um, or the brain becomes desperate for it. So it's a very good viable energy source, but also a good and viable signaling molecule that provides an anti-inflammatory and even dare I say metabolic benefit.